Alrighty guys, welcome back to another special episode of The Ankle. It's a big cherry. <laughs> big? Big? Are you calling me big? No. So we're continuing our <clears throat> little retro react mini series to her struggles being me videos that she did five years ago. Oh wow, drastic drop. This one only had 79,000 views. The other one had at least over 100. Damn. Drastic drop between part one and part two. But let's just dive right in, guys, because I do have work this afternoon in a couple hours, so I want to get this <clears throat> out to you before I go do all that and then get a fresh new video out for you tonight once she posts. So let's just dive right in, guys. Hey guys, okay, so welcome to part two of Struggling Being Me. So if you can see part one, you should definitely- Struggling being me. <laughs> you, we can tell you're struggling, girl. Yeah, it was the video that I uploaded yesterday. So what this series is, it's a three-part series of kind of the struggles I'm experiencing being a morbidly obese girl. And the reason why I am titling it Struggling Being Me is because these are the things that I experience and I feel like there's a lot of, you know, stereotypes regarding, you know, people my size. So I kind of just wanted to clear up some and talk about some that I experience almost on a daily basis basis some are embarrassing actually the issue is though amber is that like every stereotype there is for a morbidly obese person it's you like it's unironically you you are every stereotype smelly lazy manipulative like be real all of them are so let's get to part two so number one for this video is everything is a constant reminder of my weight i feel like i am thinking about my weight 24 7. so do something about it no matter what i'm doing if i'm going to the restaurant oh my god am i gonna break the chair am i gonna fit in the booths i go to someone's house am i gonna make their floor creak am i gonna break their furniture i go somewhere where it revolves a little bit of walking am i gonna pass out am i gonna die i see my reflection in the freaking mirror and i'm just like whoa literally everything makes me think about my weight honestly absolutely everything number two is i get tired doing anything i get tired doing anything even just sometimes i catch myself even i'm just sitting and i have to take like a really deep breath like i'm just done walking i'm like girl you didn't do anything like you think that would be an eye-opener to hurry up and drop this weight but it's like since i experience eating disorders it's it's hard for me it's a constant yeah see for the longest time she expressed that she does have an eating disorder and then all of a sudden when the weight loss arc came into it she was just like oh you guys i i don't have an eating disorder i'm fine i just overeat on accident battle of wanting to be someone else but being trapped in like a disease but yeah i get tired walking you are a disease that's for sure amber tired <laughs> bathing i get tired doing chores i get tired doing anything like it could be absolutely anything and i'm just like what? and she's smaller in this video guys like she the thumbnails for this series is all like shots of her body and whatnot and you can tell she is significantly smaller in these videos <clears throat> than she is now. That was tiring. So number three is backhanded compliments. This is something I struggle with. And the most common one that I- Well, I already know what she's going to say. Like, oh, but you're so pretty. Girl, are they supposed to compliment your body? Are they supposed to say, oh, Amber, your legs are looking really good today. How would that make you feel with your fucking lymphedema? You know, like, come on, girl. I'm not going to say that it's all like obese people, but a lot really do love to just play the victim in every situation. And that's half of the reason why they are morbidly obese. And I know a lot of other people get that are my size is you have such a beautiful face. And I'm just like, oh, well. Thanks? <laughs> Why can't you just call me beautiful? Why does it have to be, you have such a beautiful face? Because they're not gonna lie to you. Okay, Amber? It's not beautiful. Like, to call all of you beautiful? Like, really? She just wants, like, 
blind support from everyone that fucking some- interacts with her high school that i will never forget so as you guys know i'm a lesbian but during the time that i figured that out i did go through a very very large phase where i thought i was bisexual because you grow up and you think you're supposed to be with guys she still thinks she's bi whole thing that's a whole other story but um i did have a boyfriend and his name was nathan and i was doing my make oh poor nathan poor nathan i hope that boy's doing all right (laughs) and he looked at me and he said i can't even believe i still dated him after this he was like If you were skinny, you would be the hottest and most attractive girl on this whole planet. And I was like, thanks. Yeah, cool. I mean, no, not really. I doubt it. I really, truly doubt it. (laughs) Because you know what? She probably looks better now than she would skinny. I don't even know what her bone structure is, but eh. That's like a complete backhanded compliment. Or, like, because, like, your face completely changes when you drop, like, a significant amount of weight, cut out, like, sugars and whatnot. Your face changes. Like, it's crazy. You'll look like a completely different person. And, you know, for a while, it's not that I was afraid to lose weight, it's just that I was afraid that, like, I had never truly seen my face before. Because it was always under all the fat. So once I lost all the weight, like, and seeing, like, who I actually am. I don't know. It was a bit of a confidence booster, honestly. But not everyone is as blessed as me. (laughs) You're, like, hanging out. You're like, God, I wish I wasn't fat. And people are like, you're so beautiful. It's like, bitch, I never said I wasn't. Like, it's just like... (laughs) Like See, nothing is ever fucking good enough for these people. Literally nothing. They're just going to nitpick everything that you say until, like, you're just blindly kissing their fat asses. And the compliments that people just don't, I don't think they realize that they're doing them, honestly. Number four, I freaking hate. I can't. Well, I can give you, like, a straight up, you know, straight up diss. Straight up insult, if that works better for you, Amber. Jeans and I can't wear high heels. I want to be able to wear. Could you imagine this bitch in a pair of high heels? Like some pumps? Some pleaser pumps? Oh my god. <laughs> Ain't a shoe in the world meant to hold that much. Okay? Sh- this girl would break Latrice Royale's <laughs> shoes. <laughs> if you guys know anything about like drag race or whatnot, Latrice is like a really, really large queen. She's probably well over 400 pounds. Um, But, I mean, she looks great. Latrice, not Amber. (laughs) Latrice is an amazing, beautiful person. Um, But she is a big girl. And she does have, I mean, like on Drag Race, she would get red a lot because she was always in, like, these little kitten heels with, like, a two and a half inch heel (laughs) on them. And it's like, well, the she can't walk in huge heels, honestly. So, like, it doesn't surprise me. Plus, Amber only ever wears, like, these flimsy little fucking slipper things. Because I love high heels. Like, you, ooh, girl, you can dress up, like, any type of outfit. Like, oh, God, I wish. <laughs> like, I can't wear anything with a heel. Not even like this. Not even like this. Because that, that shit hurts. I'm not- I mean, she could try a wedge, but I just don't think she has the ankle strength or the stability to do any of that. Because I'm holding up so much weight on my body that a heel like this feels like it's like this big. And that's not even an exaggeration. So that really sucks. And I can't find any jeans that fit me. I mean, we saw her when she jumped off of the curb and she was scared to do so. Like literally a two inch curb. There are heels higher than that curb, girl. You would fuck yourself up real bad not even torrid has jeans that fit me i can't even tell you what size jeans i wear so that's why i wear black stretchy pants and thankfully they go with anything i have probably 10 pairs of the exact same pair of pants and sadly because the dogs here love me okay that's a good thing but they're putting holes in my pants because they're so thin and stretchy that their nails rip my pants so i was trying to go because i actually get them well i mean i bet it's also just wear and tear from You know, you getting caught on door hinges and shit as you try to maneuver around your house. 
Walmart. So I was looking on walmart.com because that's where I got them before and they don't have any more in my size. So I'm kind of like screwed and uh, it's just like these are the only type of pants I can wear and it sucks. So number five is walking anywhere is hard for me. Uh, Could you imagine like Amber in a pair of jeans? I, I don't think that's possible up off my bed and walking to the bathroom i'm like <sighs> you know in the grocery store that's like a big in that is so hard for me and i don't expect anyone to understand like my back is in excruciating pain which i talked about that in part one you know why i have back problems and just amongst the pain i can't breathe so that's why i've been using you know little walmart scooters and it's it's embarrassing it's it's so embarrassing oh my god and when i go to the mall like but it doesn't stop you you can say you're embarrassed all you want, but you still do it and you don't actively try to get better. I literally only go to a few stores and in between each store I'll sit. In fact, you actively try to get worse. For like 10 to 15 minutes and take a break because walking is so hard so hard and it's just getting harder and harder with every pound that i gain and people take walking for granted people take most of these things for granted that i have to deal with on the daily so number six is like kind of like oh my god this is so embarrassing why did i even ask? we've talked about the whole taking advantage uh storyline already she loves to say that when like you know most of us haven't eaten ourselves to the point where we can't do those things anymore so we appreciate it just fine because we don't allow ourselves to get to a point where we can't do those things amber obviously you have taken everything like that for granted okay because you just kept gaining weight you just allowed yourself to get here so list so i like to do my own laundry so i'm able to put it in the washer just fine but becky has to get it out of the washer for me the question is why oh my god it's so amazing um yeah she's she can't like even do her own laundry so when she shows us videos of her doing that like girl you're gonna have to find some front loading washing machines and whatnot if you can't bend down so since i am a shorter girl and i have really short arms um but my stomach is huge and the washing machine goes down very deep i can't one reach my arm in and bend down and grab my laundry because my stomach is in the way um i know it's not just because i'm short it's because literally my stomach is in the way I can't even do my own laundry fully by myself. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, ugh, the struggles of being me. Number seven. So how's she going to do it on her own now that she's bigger and heavier? Is what I've but she swears, you guys, she's doing so much better. And she's doing so much better even though she's heavier now than she was in this video. Experienced a lot. One size fits all is a complete lie. Well, no shit, Amber, because to be honest, you're an anomaly. Like I've said before, people as big as you shouldn't exist. So yeah, like of course not everything is going to fucking fit you because you can't have one size fits all fit someone that is an extra small or just a small all the ways up to a 6X. That's fucking ridiculous. Like that is so ridiculous. No amount of stretchy fabric could make that work you know just not true i know when you know companies are making these clothing they're not thinking that a 500 pound woman is gonna go buy it but i feel like saying one size fits all in the society we live in today and it's also a discouragement against like being this big like i said before there is no reason for people to be this big so like there should be factors to discourage you away from being this big and society not being accommodate, accommodative to someone who has done this to themselves, I think is fine. I don't think we all need to accommodate to people that are literally killing themselves. That seems a little ridiculous. That we live in today is a freaking law. I mean, back in the day, of course, go of course, maybe Kentucky is different. I live in New Jersey and there's not that many like, I mean, there are, but not as many as Amber. Like, I've never seen someone Amber size in New Jersey. So that's a little like just kind of a clouded blanket statement, but write it on there because they're probably i don't know middle america is probably way different since there's nothing to fucking do out there except shoot guns and kiss your cousin isn't the epidemic of obesity as it is now but 
one size fits all? Mm, no. How about one size fits many? I don't know. But it's just it's just a lie because I get super excited. I'm like, oh, one size fits all because I'm part of the all category, aren't I? And then I try it on. No, you're really not, to be honest, Amber, because no one should be this size. So no, we really shouldn't be including you in the conversation. Whoops, I ripped it. Number eight is I do wear cardigans in the- Why would you even attempt? Why would you even buy something that says one size fits all in an attempt? When you're that big, you should just- have the fucking clarity to know that it's not going to fit your big ass. I actually have seen a lot of people do that, even thinner people. I don't know why they're doing it, but why I'm doing it is because I'm very, 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 very self-conscious of my arms. Even as I'm sitting here, I'm wearing a cardigan. Um, I feel like... Yeah, she's still very much like this, but she shows off her bat wings a lot more now because they're so much bigger. Cardigans, you know, they do add more style to that to the outfit because if i was just wearing this like that it wouldn't be you know as cute this does add more style. <laughs> wouldn't be as cute cardigans make me feel like to be honest this is completely unrelated to her being a fatty but um i don't know i don't think this color combo the purple with the like tribal native american pattern works I just don't i think it's clashing too much in my opinion she should have wore a black shirt or red of my rolls and my stomach is showing Makes or even like a greener color because there's green right in here or like a beige but like there ain't no purple in this I feel like my arms are more compacted and covered which they are and i just feel completely yeah she's literally a fucking overstuffed sausage she has to use her clothes to pull everything back in when i'm not wearing a cardigan i feel like i'm naked everyone's looking at me and judging me and hating on me and i just don't like well i mean amber you could go out fully clothed or completely naked and people are going to judge you like that's just how it is when you're that freaking big you have made yourself a spectacle so it can be 20 degrees outside or it can be 120 degrees outside. I'll be wearing a freaking cardigan. So number nine is something you guys have seen firsthand is I waddle when I walk. That is a struggle. And it's because my weight and how it's proportioned. And I, I just walk so weird. And it's like, while I'm walking, I don't notice that I waddle when I walk. But like, if someone is filming me, that's like the only time I notice I waddle when I walk. And that's embarrassing because that's how I walk 24 seven. It's like so embarrassing. And Eric used to vlog her walking all the time. It was so shady. Be like, oh, here comes Amber Lynn. <laughs> I hate it so much because if here she comes waddling down the driveway. It draws even more attention to myself in public. It's like not only am I morbidly obese, but I'm literally walking like a penguin and I'm like swaying back and forth. And I have actually mentally tried to fix this. I have tried to walk differently, um, and it just it doesn't work. And I know it's because of the weight that I am holding onto my body. It's your legs, girl. You can't get your legs closed to a certain degree. Because I have watched earlier videos when I used to weigh like 350 and I didn't waddle like that. So it's definitely the weight gain and I just can't wait to lose the weight so I don't look like a freaking dummy while I'm walking. Well, five years later and that didn't fucking happen. Because it's just really embarrassing. So number 10, which is the last one for this video, but again, there will be a part three. So number 10 is booths in restaurants. I don't fit in really any of them. And the only time I can ever fit in a booth is if we are on an end booth and I can push the booth back. See, that's embarrassing because it always makes a really loud like <clears throat> noise. And then like everyone in the restaurant is like, what's that noise? And then they look at you and then it's like obvious what you're doing. And I can only imagine what their brains are thinking. Like this girl should. Yeah, at work, like. I mean, we have a lot of booths in the restaurant I work at. It's a huge freaking restaurant, like literally five dining rooms. Um, but whenever I have had a couple like really big um, customers before and yeah, like hosts know that if they see a really large person come in nowadays that they're not going to be able to fit into a booth. So, we don't even try it. Like, <laughs> we'll just bring them right to a table because we know it's not going to fucking happen. And to, like, save them the embarrassment, too, obviously. Because, like, there's nothing wrong with asking, like, if they were to bring them back, give them a booth. There's nothing wrong with asking, oh, can we have a table, actually? But, like, subconsciously, that person knows that that... At, they're asking that because they're not going to fit. And that is an insecurity thing. So, like, you might as well just nip in the bud and just bring them to the table. If they're, if they're real hefty, just bring them to a table because a booth is not going to work.
went out to eat like she can't even fit in the booth like i can only imagine so that's embarrassing um so every time i go into a restaurant i always say you know two for a table four for a table i always say table and there has been an experience where they i asked for a table and they gave us a booth and in front of everybody i'm like I can't sit in a booth and it's just really embarrassing and it just sucks so bad but that's just well i mean you don't have to say i can't sit in the booth you could just say oh no sorry we asked for a table but like another struggle that i experienced so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys are really excited for part three everything always has to come back to how big she is and how the world doesn't accommodate to her like those are even more embarrassing so get ready for that i'll see you guys in my next one mm, i'm excited Let's see some comments. Please take these things. People take these things for granted, says the girl who takes life for granted. Exactly. Like, girl, none of us are taking this shit for granted. It's all you. I'm going to be straight up with you. I felt all these things at 300 pounds. Can't imagine at over 500. Listen, I have been struggling with an eating disorder, but I never once blamed my weight on my eating disorder. I also have PCOS and hypothyroidism which has made it hard, but I'm down to 225 on my own, just watching what I eat. You can do it. She can't, though. That's the issue. Like, give her all the support you want, I guess, but it's not going to mean anything because she's physically incapable of change. You would think that listing off all these struggles would be an eye-opener. You may have an eating disorder, but with the help of a therapist, you could overcome this disorder. Girl... She had a huge eye-opener with cancer just a year or so after these videos were filmed. And that didn't even open up her eyes. Like, one of the worst things that can happen to people, and it did nothing for her. You should just call this series Problems I Could Fix But Won't. Exactly. Like, it's all... She just wants sympathy as usual for something that she has done to herself you know it is a problem when you can't fit towards clothing yeah this series is basically let me address 30 problems from the comments section that i pretend not to read <laughs> here we go again i curse myself for ever finding amberlynn and amy slayton's channels now i can't stop watching bruh it's a fucking train wreck that you can't take your eyes off of it really is did I really just watch a grown woman who is unwilling to change her situation but is willing to travel two hours just to binge at the Cheesecake Factory, expect people to sympathize with her struggles of not being able to wear high heels, constantly being told she has a beautiful face and having to adapt to clothing manufacturers who rudely refuse to cater to her very specific needs? Oh, that's so much. <laughs> I hope Michael Lawrence makes a video on this mess of a series faster than a beanbag in a hurry. Is that Michael B. Petty? Who's Michael Lawrence? Or is that... I'm confused. People take walking for granted. Nope, we treasure it, which is why we aren't 500 pounds. Yeah. Like, we, we didn't allow ourselves to get to the point to where we can't walk anymore. Beanbag, you're so close to being 600 pounds and being bed-bound. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let's do a series of struggles of being ALR's girlfriend. Come on, Becky, do it. No, for real. Anyways, I'm going to get this sent out to you guys quickly because I have to be at work in about an hour and a half um, but I will see you guys later for hopefully day 12 or 13 of her fucking uploading or whatever um, but yeah take care guys and have a great day